Okay, so guys, uh, I know some of you guys know that uh, I like to cook, and even though I might be one of the weakest ones, um, I just want to share your story. Um, before we, you know, started getting into this, uh, there was this moment in the season where all the guys were starting to work out. So, you know, they were trying to eat healthy, they were trying to uh, eat better and just look good, and so I had a genius idea to make a grilled chicken Caesar salad because those things are healthy and they're easy to make and I wanted to impress my, my roommates. So, you know, I, you know, I grilled the chicken, it, was really, it turned out really great, it was nice and moist and I was excited. And then I threw the vegetables in and I was even being even more intentional and I put all the different kinds of sauces, you know, for them, each one that they like. And I just presented the table and it looked beautiful, it looked amazing. But there was one problem. All the vegetables that I put in were rotten. <laughs> so you see some of these guys about to eat, and actually one of them had a worm in their fork. And it was just something that came, uh, you know, intentionally was so good, became so disastrous. You know, it was pretty bad. I'm still working on that. But I think, um, I think just like that, I think that's a good picture of um, sometimes the way we live our lives. Sometimes we like to present the good parts of us. But inside, there are just certain places that are rotten, certain places that are dark, certain places that are sinful. And I think along the way, we, uh, you know, we, thought, we think that we could just cover up those places and we could just show our good side, present the good side of us or the perfect side of us, and hide the disgusting or the rotten sides or the bad parts of who we are. And whether because it's whether because of fear or shame or just downright just feeling reject, or you don't want to feel rejected for who you really are, you kind of built like a false self of who we are. You know, so people will like us, people will love us, people will be impressed by us. And we could decorate it with just titles, we decorate it with accolades, we decorate it with all the things that people like, but as a result, the inside of our places don't really show up. The places where we want to be loved for the unlovable parts don't really uh, come out, and really, at the end of the day, we grow more distant and further away from the people that we want to be loved by and to love other people. Because deep down inside, we know that they don't really know who we really are. And it gets even worse because when you're talking about the gospel or you're talking about Jesus Christ, it's hard for the, the gospel to really speak into us because Jesus wants to speak into those rotten places of the in our parts or in our souls that we want to hide, that we want to cover up, you know? And that's where it comes com conflicting because when you're living the life of the gospel or you're, if you're a Christian or a seeker today, if we hide those places in our lives, there's, it's almost impossible for us to really meet Jesus. And it's really impossible for us to really see change in what the real gospel means for our lives. You know, the, uh, we're going on to this series on foundations. And I think one of the greatest faulty foundations that we have and what we learned along the way is that we have to have it all together. You know, we have to be perfect. You know, we have to have all A's or else you're not a true Asian for some of the Asian people. You know, you know we have to be a certain type of uh, mold or model or else people or the world will reject you. And today, I want to talk about those places because it's a lie. And what the gospel wants to do and what Jesus wants to do is meet into those places where we're really our true selves. Because Jesus came not for the healthy, but for the sick. And in uh, Psalm 51, he says, God welcomes and embraces of some, the broken and the contrite heart. And that's what I want to talk about today, the broken places in our lives the places where we can be real and true and be okay and be vulnerable in those places so that God could really change us and we could actually be free from any of those shameful areas in our lives. So today, I want to go to uh, just a simple lesson into James 5, verse 16. And I want to answer this question is, how do I really begin to deal with my stuff? How do I really begin to embrace the real uh, issues in our life and really grow and change. And we, we find that in James uh, 5.16. And he says, it's really simple. He goes, therefore, 
Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Now, if you look at this passage, you go, why, James, do you say confess your sins to each other? Why pray for each other? Why can't I just tell, or just express my sins to just God? Wouldn't it be so much easier? You know, wouldn't it be so much, you know, less shameful? But I think James says something, shares something here and an insight about um, sin that really could illuminate how, uh, and bring us um, a freedom to those places. Because he knows that, you know, all of us have a problem of being honest with ourselves. All of, all of us, are, if you really think about it, are subjective when it comes to our sin and shame. And here, uh, James shows that he's trying to illustrate the, the false lie that, you know, it, it's okay not to be okay. And in this journey, we need a community together to walk towards and just to grow and love Jesus Christ. Like, for example, I'll tell you something about being subjective. I remember, like, a while ago, I had a bad streak of car accidents. Every time I would call Pastor Sam, he would not pick up because he would know what the problem was. And so one time I was driving in the city, and we were I, it was when we had a minivan, which was really awesome. And we were driving in the city, and I was with Andrew Park, and it was really dark, and I think I was just being one of those careless moments. And then, you know, Andrew said, oh, there's a free, you know, there's a parking spot right there. You can parallel park. Okay. And then I swerved too quickly, and I just heard a clank. And in just a total reaction, I just swerved out. And then Park was like, yo, what the heck were you doing? Yo, we got to go back and tell him. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't know they had it. <laughs> he goes, dude, you just hit that car. It was a parked car. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, Andrew. Nothing happened. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm like, OK. And then after a while, you know, I'm the one driving, you know? So I'm the one in control. And I'm like, yo, I don't, don't want to go back there. I don't want to go near there. You know, I don't want to do anything that would just help me see that dent and just me have to paint that thing and calling Pastor Sam again and him hearing that, oh my gosh, voice again. And, you know, it was, and to be honest with you, if Andrew wasn't there, I'll tell you, in my <laughs> sinful, sinful nature, I would have ran. I would have tell you, I would have just bounced and I would have forgotten it. But Andrew was actually the voice of objective truth in my life. He was the one that says, dude, remember, remember about integrity? Oh, yeah, that's very important. And, you know, Andrew was the voice, and honestly, the voice to bring me back and stir me back to what is true. And I, and I think just like that, that's what happens with sin. When we, when we fall into sin, when we fall into maybe the broken places in our life or even just the places where it just have been handed to us, it's really hard to see objectively. And that's why James calls us for a community to come together so that we could call each other out in truth and love so that we could actually grow in love and actually change in Jesus Christ. And, you know, that's just my heart for you guys today. You know, I don't know where you guys are at. I don't know where you've been, and I don't know what you're afraid of. But today, I just want to just encourage you that the, the whole point of the gospel, the whole point of Jesus is that he meets us in the most vulnerable places in our lives, the places that we don't want to go and the places where the most afraid of and the most sinful parts of us because he actually wants to love those places. And, and you know, I just want to encourage you today that if you're, if you're afraid or you're scared or, you know, if you have a hard time, that you will learn to expose those places, that you will come to meet with people and share those places in your life that we could actually break free from the chains of shame and actually change. So the, the point that I have today is this, let others in. And uh, my question for you today and just, uh, just the application for you today is, who are the people that you could let others into your life? that could be the representatives of God to really actually help you grow and help you change. So could you please stand up with me? Father, we want to come before you tonight. All of us have sins in our lives. That's why you came to die on the cross, and that's why many of us are here.
Because the good news of the gospel is that Jesus redeems us from the broken parts of us. As you come before the Lord today, come sincerely. Come honestly. Because he's here right now to meet you. See, the point right now of confession, confession is not the point. Loving the truth is the point. I want you to tell someone right now, confession is not the point. Now I want you to scream at them, confession is not the point. Uh, say, good for you that you confess. But that's not the point. Because you know what? A lot of Christians, and this is why a lot of Christians remain the same all the time. You confess to people, and that's your therapy. Oh, I did my part. Man, look at that. I'm so proud of myself. I confess my sin. So what? <laughs> so what if you confess to someone? So what if you confess to God? If you don't really care about what you've done, why it was so important for for. Park, Andrew Park, to be in that car. You know, it's ironic. Andrew Park played Jesus in the open door. <laughs> right? I mean, it was Jesus in the car. And why it's important to represent our sin to people is because it's like telling Jesus, this is not something I just want to hide from. This is something I don't want to be. Because at that moment, if Peebs, because he was afraid how I might think of him or I might kill him, just didn't do the, the right thing. That incident would form who he would become. So imagine right now in your life how many deceitful things that you do that you don't confess is already forming you. Just because no one knows doesn't mean it's a minus. You know what happens, right? It forms you in the secret. And that's the most dangerous part of sin. It doesn't seem that bad. It doesn't seem a big deal until later on, gradually, then suddenly you become this person that you never wanted to be. That's why you confess, because you want to love the truth. Because the Bible says the truth is Jesus. Tell someone, love the truth. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. I'm going to pray right now for the lovers of truth to come out of this room today. For truth to form us. Integrity is really, what it means is to love the truth. Even when it means I have consequences. Even when it means it doesn't make me look good. Because that's the truth. I wonder how many moments we have let go by. So that we could look better in front of people. I wonder how many moments we missed so that we don't have to deal with it. Today, the point of the message and the point of James is not confession. It's transformation. That's the point of the gospel. Holy Spirit, I want to pray for a a terrifying conviction to come over us. <laughs> because people, for all of us, God, because we need to be saved from this deceitfulness in us. Who cares, people, what people think of you? Be afraid of what you could become if you keep being addicted to the approval of people and your image and your perception. To maintain an image means to kill character. And today, Father, we pray you would do whatever it takes to make us look like Jesus. Because let me tell you the benefit of looking like Jesus. Looking like Jesus means that you could love people for real when they really need you. You will matter to this planet. Your breath won't be wasted on stupidity. When you look more like Jesus, you too 
will affect change in the world. You will matter. Your life will count. That's the gospel. So, Lord, we ask that you would move right now. So let's lift our hands. Pray that we become lovers of truth. In turn, that becomes lovers of Jesus. Let's make this our prayer. So pray for a minute right now in your heart to God. Say, God, that's my desire. I want to become more like you. I know there's tons of self-deceit, self, tons of self-conceit and self-will, but I want to become more like you. That's the desire of my heart. Tell someone, I see Christ in you. Sometimes. But I pray that as we grow in this life that we can see Christ in you all the time. Amen? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.